Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming. How are you? Hey, Carla. Yes. I have a question for you. Sure. One of my colleagues from Japan has shared a workbook with me on Tableau Server, and I'm seeing my data or the data they shared in what appears to be Japanese or some Asian language, but I would like to see the data in English. Can you help me with that? Uh, sure. Um, have you downloaded the workbook in Tableau Desktop and checked out what the workbook locale might be set to? Sounds like something I should be doing. Yeah, and uh, you also want to check your Tableau server user locale settings to see if that's set to a specific locale or if it's unspecified. And um, you okay. might also want to go check your browser language settings and see, make sure you haven't accidentally set it to an Asian language in your everyday work. OK. So, yeah. Sounds like great advice. I'm just, I'm going to need your help with that because okay. I'm, I'm kind of confused. That's a lot of information. But I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to help me with that. It's going to be great. So if you're feeling confused right now, too, that's totally OK. Our hope is that by the end of the presentation, you'll be feeling a bit less confused about the international settings that we just mentioned. My name is Carmen Hernando, this is Carla Wagner, and welcome to the session entitled Going Global, Sharing Data with Language and Culture Awareness. And now the reason why we enacted this short dialogue is because when we first joined Tableau, we struggled to understand the international or language and locale settings. When we had to explain them to customers and colleagues, they were just as confused as we were. And we've seen that for the last four or five years we've been at Tableau. So we thought that would be a good topic to talk about. And so, without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves. Here's a world map with some of the countries and languages which have played an important role in our lives. Now I'll just go ahead and introduce Carla. Carla Wagner, as I like to call her, or Carla Wagner, um, is a senior quality assurance engineer. She's been working at Tableau for the last five years. She is in the development organization on the internationalization team where she drives globalization at Tableau Software. Carla is based out of the Seattle office in Washington State, but she was born in a small town in Iowa. She then moved to Japan, where she learned Japanese, and her Japanese is amazing. Um, she can also speak a variety of other Asian languages and European languages. She's married to a Colombian, so as you can see, she has lived a truly global life. Carmen has a more global life than me. She speaks a number of European languages fluently, and she actually helps customers in those languages in our Dublin, Ireland technical support office where she's a lead and she's been at Tableau for four years but she's originally from Spain and on St. Patty's Day in Ireland she's been known to dance flamenco while drinking a green beer. So <laughs> that is totally true. Yeah. <laughs> they really drink green beer there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they do. They, they totally do on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So now that you've, you know a little bit about us, we're just going to go ahead and talk about our goals and for that we're going to head over to the podium so we can see the screen better. And, and you can see it too. So the goals for this presentation are to first familiarize ourselves with those international or language and locale settings at Tableau. We will then be learning something, some tips and tricks to successfully share data globally and to troubleshoot any data format issues that you might encounter. Next, we'll briefly introduce a new Tableau community space about internationalization. And Carla is going to talk about some upcoming features at Tableau. At the end of that, we will point you in the direction of some useful resources, and we'll have some time for questions. If we don't have time to answer all of your questions, don't worry about that. We'll give you some other options to have your questions answered. And so we have two requests for you today. The first one is that if you have any questions, you hold them until the end of the presentation. And the second one is that throughout the course of this presentation, you make a mental note or a physical note, if you prefer, of any tips and tricks that you think could be useful to you in your day-to-day -day job when you go back after the conference. Or any tips and tricks that could have helped you in the past, but you didn't know about them just yet. And with that in mind, we're going to briefly talk about our mission at Tableau, and hopefully the next statement looks slightly familiar. Our mission is to help people see and understand data in their native language and culture. 
And although the statement continues, I'm gonna stop here because this is the most relevant part to our presentation. What does this statement mean? It means that by default, Tableau products display data in your native language, in the end user's native language, without them having to do absolutely anything. And so on Tableau desktop, we will be reading the language and locale settings on your machine or your device. And same thing on the browser. Tableau server, Tableau online, Tableau public will be reading your browser language and displaying the data and the user interface to you in that language. And so why do we have these settings? Well, there's many reasons for that, but I'll give you a couple of examples. A lot of organizations want to, want to have a standard format for all of their users across the organization, regardless of the country where they're based or the language and locale settings in their devices. We also live in a global world, so sometimes when we travel, we might use devices with different language settings. And the, the list goes on and on. But what is really important is to be aware that these settings exist and how they interact together so that we can share data globally successfully. And if we ever encounter any data format issues, know how to troubleshoot them. And that's two things we're gonna look at today. And now over to Carla. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about two key concepts that we're gonna repeat pretty frequently in this talk today is the notion of Tableau language versus Tableau locale. And I know some, a lot of people on my development organization get these confused. So I'm, um, when I'm talking about the Tableau language, I'm talking about the UI, the user interface. So all the stuff highlighted in green here are strings that we translate, my team actually owns getting translated into all the languages that Tableau is currently localized into, such as menus, format panes, trend line descriptions, et cetera. So it really doesn't have to do anything with your data, it's just the way your, your Tableau product, what language is displayed in. And when I talk, we talk about locale, we're talking about um, all the data formatting, um, number of formats, dates, times, map labels, sort orders, and even collation are impacted by your locale settings. And now t Carmen's gonna give us a little more detail. Yeah. So it is key to understand what language and locale are, so we can then talk about those international or language and locale settings at Tableau. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about four main settings. The first of them being the operating system locale, which some of you might already be familiar with. The operating system locale is what is going to define the language and the data format of everything on your machine or your device. And here is a screenshot of what the operating system locale settings look like on Windows. So in this example, we have Korean from Korea as our operating system locale, and we can see what this locale consists in. It is also possible to customize operating system locale settings, which we're gonna talk about later on. Our second setting is the workbook locale, and hopefully you've heard about this one too. The workbook locale can only be defined from Tableau desktop. And it also defines the locale, as the name indicates, or the data format in which you're gonna see your data on a workbook by workbook basis. By default, it is set to automatic, which means we're just gonna read the operating system locale settings on your device. And very important, when we talk about the workbook locale, we need to know that this is a locale setting that supersedes or overrides all other locale settings that exist. And a very geeky thing to say, but for me, in my head, the workbook locale is like the one ring that rules them all. It's just, so if you use it, just, I know, very geeky. Um, if you use it, use it well, so use it carefully. And how to set the workbook locale? From Tableau Desktop, click on File, Workbook Locale, and pick the workbook locale that you want to see your data in, so the data format that you want, typically a country and a language. Our setting number three is the Tableau Server or Tableau Online user language and locale settings. And the keyword here is user. So on Tableau Server and Tableau Online, every user can pick a default language and locale from their account settings. So a language, 
for the UI to be displayed and a locale that will define the format they're seeing their data in. Our setting number four is a Tableau Server admin language and locale. And now as the name indicates, this is available in Tableau Server, and it can be defined by the Tableau Server admin. This is a mandatory setting in the sense that the Tableau Server admin will have to pick a language and a locale during installation of Tableau Server. But this is only a fallback mechanism. So in the unlikely event that we're enabled to read your browser language and any other language and locale settings, we're gonna be falling back to this setting on Tableau Server. The setting is available at the level of the server and not of the site which means that it is not available on Tableau Online. But again, in the unlikely um, event that we were able, unable to read your language, uh, browser language on Tableau Online, we would fall back to English by default. Hopefully that makes sense. And over to Carla for some interesting facts about language. Um, how many of you are using Tableau now and using it in a different language other than English? So, I don't know if you know, but we actually, we currently translate our, all of our products into eight languages, including English, they're listing United States English. And um, if you install Tableau desktop for the first time on an operating system in one of these languages, it will install in that language. However, you can change it later. Um, and um, if you install on a, like an operating system that we don't currently have tra Tableau translated into, the installation will fall back to English. And if you wanna know how to change those, if you haven't done that before, we have additional slides in our appendix with steps for all of our Tableau products, including Tableau prep and server and desktop, pub, mobile, et cetera. So um, for locale, the locale affects the data, your workbook data format. So one thing that impacts is the date format. For example, how are months displayed? How are weekday names displayed? In what language um, is, what are the formats? Year, day, month, or year, month, day, day, year, month, et cetera, and the separators between them. So um, another thing that's impacted is the number formats. Um, as you know, in the United States, we have a dot for a decimal and a, a comma for a thousand separator, but um, in some countries, the thousand separator could be a space, could be apostrophe, and it could be a, a, a dot, and the decimal could be a comma instead of a dot. And um, in some languages like Arabic, there's native digit support. Um, so the, all of the things highlighted in orange here are things that are impacted by the locale settings, dates, and number formats. And another thing that is impacted are the map labels. We translate our map data into the same languages that we translate the Tableau user interface, a little more actually. And so if you have your locale set to, for example, Portuguese, Brazil in this example, your map labels will be in Portuguese. So um, the thing is that map labels if, if you have your workbook locale to, sets to something we don't currently have localized map data for, it falls back to English. So in this case, um, I have Arabic Morocco as my locale, and you're seeing all the European, uh, well, all over the map in, in English. If you want it in French, you could you know, change your locale to French, and you would see that French Morocco. So map labels are not the same as geographic, Fields, your data, your country names, city names, et cetera, and your data are actually, you know, your data, and currently we don't have a way to translate those based on your locales, so I'm strictly talking about the background map labels. And if you want to hide those or enable those, you can just go to the map menu and go to map legends, and you can check or uncheck country region names. And, um, yeah. So one other thing that's impacted by the Locale settings are currency symbols. So if your data already contains a currency field, we're not going to change your data that's a euro to dollar signs because your, your locale is US dollar. We'll preserve, you know, we, we're not gonna change that for you. That would be pretty bad. But if, for example, you wanted to change the format of a number field to a currency, the default locale should be whatever your locale is set to. So you can go to the, on a, on a field, 
Click under Measures. You can select Default Properties, Number Format, and if you select Currency Standard, you'll see another locale list where you can change the locale. So, for example, on this slide, if you'd pick French, France, then Euro would become your uh, currency symbol. So, so, what determines the workbook data format on Tableau Desktop? First, workbook locale. The workbook locale is the boss. If, <laughs> if you set the workbook locale to something, that's going to stick, no matter who you share your data with. And if you, if you publish to server, the workbook locale is going to determine the formats. The default for workbook locale is automatic, and in that case, we look at the OS locale to determine how to format your data. So if I shared it with someone on another machine, it's going to be displayed in the formats of their device. So to remember this, you can think, whoa. Anyone say, whoa. <laughs> so how about Tableau Server? What determines the format on Tableau Server? Again, workbook locale is the boss. You can't set it on server, unfortunately, at this moment, but if you set it in desktop and then publish the server, it's gonna stick. It's gonna be, your data will be formatted in the workbook locale. And if you don't set that, you leave it to automatic, we're gonna fall back and lose use your Tableau server user locale. And if that's not set, we're gonna fall back to using your browser language. Now, in the rare case that your browser's language is something we don't support, like Klingon, then we're going to fall back to using the Tableau server admin locale. So your, only your server admin can set this fallback language, or locale, I'm sorry. And to think, just think WUBA, if you want to remember the order in which we decide the format. So workbook locale, user locale, browser, and admin locale. Can everyone say WUBA? <laughs> okay. So for Tableau Online, it's almost the same. Workbook locale first, then user locale, then browser language. And as Carmen mentioned earlier, we don't have an admin language uh, locale setting, so um, it would fall back to English. So you can just remember WUB if you're a Tableau Online user. And if you have questions about how, to, how this works in other Tableau products, we have more slides. We have a lot of appendix slides. Um, <laughs> so you can check that out after the presentation. And back to Carmen. Yeah. Awesome. I really like those acronyms that Carla came up with, the WO, Woman, WUBA. And keep those in mind because we're going to go back to that. Actually, there is, we're, we're going to repeat these settings over and over. So hopefully, by the end of the presentation, you will remember all of them. You will know them by heart. Next, we're going to go into the meaty stuff. We're going to talk about the tips and tricks, or some tips and tricks to work with data um, globally and to troubleshoot any data format issues that you encounter. We're going to focus on design-specific tips and tricks versus some role-specific tips and tricks, which we have included in the appendix. So as Carla said, there is a lot of information in the appendix. Um, we would advise that you go to those after the presentation. Definitely worth it. And so the main sections we're going to cover are workbook and data source format. We're going to talk about environment settings. And then Carla is going to talk about dates, time, and mapping. So let's talk about workbook format. The first piece of advice that we're going to give you is super basic. And we're pretty confident that you know this by now, but we're going to say it all the same. Many organizations want to define a standard format for workbook visualization. And if that is the case for you, all you need to do is define a workbook locale before publishing your workbook. So you probably already knew this by now. Yeah, pretty confident. Um, so we set the locale, we change it from automatic to whichever locale we want to display our data in. And we do this before publishing the workbook. Now, how many of you have ever encountered data format issues when someone shared a workbook with you? Yeah, some people, a few people, okay, cool. So it is really important to have a list of some basic things that we can check to troubleshoot those data issues or data format issues. And we're gonna give you the order of operators. 
So the first thing that you want to do when you encounter data format issues on Tableau Desktop is to verify the workbook locale. Once you verify the workbook locale, if the workbook locale is fine, which should be dictating the data format you're seeing, we're gonna check on the specific field that we're seeing the issue with. So from the measure or dimension pane, depending on the type of field that is affected, we will check the default properties. In this case, we have sales that is not displaying as we'd like to see it. So we check the default properties and because it is a measure, the, num the number format, and from there, we can check the number of decimal separators, whether a currency symbol has been defined, or a bunch of other settings. If the issue is affecting only a specific instance of a field, also known as pill, let's focus on that specific pill. And we will do that from the rows, the columns, or the marks card. In this specific example, we've got this, uh, the measure sales, which we have placed on the text shelf. And it's not displaying the way we would like to see it, but it's only this specific pill and not all of the instances of the field sales. So to check its format, we will click on the drop-down menu arrow from where it is, so from the text shelf, click on format, and then depending on whether the issue is happening on the axis or the pane, so the view itself, we will click on one of those two. In this example, I've clicked on pane, and from there, we can check the number format. Um, we can see that the currency is currently being defined by the local English from the United States, so we should be seeing dollars. Similarly, if we encounter data format issues on Tableau server or Tableau online, there's a few things that we need to check, and here is the order of operators for that. First thing, we want to check if there's a defined workbook locale, which we can only do from Tableau Desktop. So we will need to download the workbook, open it in Tableau Desktop, and then check if there's a defined workbook locale. And so when my colleagues from Tokyo were sharing this workbook with me on Tableau Server, and I was seeing everything in Japanese, well, the reason why is because they had set the workbook locale to Japanese from Japan. And so I was seeing all of the map labels in Japanese. After checking the workbook locale, if we're still seeing issues on the browser site, we'll want to check the Tableau server or Tableau online user locale. Is it unspecified? Has it been defined to a specific language or locale in this case? And if so, that should be defining the data format that we're seeing. But if, it's, if it is set to unspecified, let's check the browser language. And if I set my browser language to French, then that means I should be seeing data in French format. And last but not least, if we're on Tableau server, the Tableau server admin locale will be what is defining the data format if we fail to read the browser language. Next, we're gonna talk about data source format. And we're just gonna give you a piece of advice, but it applies to multiple platforms. Have you ever worked with text files? Has anyone ever worked with TELS files before? Okay. Couple of people. Okay, so we have seen that most customers or most end users don't know that it is possible to define a locale for text files in Tableau Desktop. And so this is really well hidden and we wanted to talk about this today. Text files typically have extensions TXT or CSV. And yes, they can be configured for a specific locale. Why would we want to do this? Text files consist of strings and by defining a locale for that file, we can easily identify the field data type as well as the format in which we want to see it. And so from Tableau Desktop, after connecting to my sample CSV file from the data source canvas, by clicking the drop-down menu arrow, we can select the text file properties and define a specific locale as well as a bunch of other settings. The same is possible for Tableau Server and Tableau Online on the browser. There's just a couple of prerequisites for that. The ability to connect to data sources directly from the browser was first added in 2018.1. So it is necessary to be in this version or a later version to define the locale for a text file after connecting to it. 
It is also necessary to have a creator license to connect to data from the browser. So you will need these two prerequisites to be able to define the locale for a text file. And so from the browser, I have connected to my listing CSV file. And again, from the data source canvas, I click the drop-down menu arrow, and from the text file properties, I can set a specific locale. Next, we're gonna talk about environment settings. We mentioned towards the beginning of the presentation that it is possible to customize operating system locales in Tableau. And while we don't encourage you to customize your operating system locale on your machine, we would like for you to be aware that if you customize it, Tableau Desktop will be reading these settings when the workbook locale is set to automatic. We would also like to raise awareness about the fact that right now, the way the product works, Tableau Server will not be reading your operating system locale settings, whether they're customized or not. In fact, the only time when Tableau Server should be reading your operating system locale is during installation, so it can, it can pick up the language for installation of the product. It is also not possible to customize workbook locales. This is something that customers have been asking for, and if this is something that you would like to see, we will give you later on a place where you can share your feedback. And so in this specific example, we have the operating system locale English from the United States, but we're gonna go ahead and customize it by clicking on the additional settings button. And from there, we're gonna set the decimal separator to a comma and the digit or thousand separator to a space. This is not the standard format for US English. And after doing that, so after applying our operating system customizations, as long as the workbook locale is set to automatic, we see that the dates are in standard US English, so first the month, then the day, and then the year, but the numbers are displayed slightly differently. So we have a space as a thousand separator and a comma as a decimal separator, which is not standard US English format. Regardless of the operating system locale customizations, if we pick a specific workbook locale, so if we pick English from the United States, then we're gonna see just this specific format. So English from the United States. And we see that the dates are the same as before, but then the numbers have the standard US English format. So we have a comma for the thousand separators and a dot for the decimal separators. It is possible to combine different language and locale settings, and we would just like to raise awareness about this. So we're not encouraging you to go crazy and change all of your language and locale settings, make them all different, but it is good to be aware that it happens sometimes that the person who publishes content and the end user who is consuming it have different language and locale settings. And so we're gonna give you a couple of examples so we see different combinations of settings and what is the end result. Example number one, on Tableau Desktop, if the Tableau Desktop language is set to French and the workbook locale is US English, but the operating system locale of the machine where Tableau Desktop is installed is German, the end result is that the Tableau Desktop UI will be in French because the Tableau Desktop language that we picked was French and the data format was, is US English because the workbook locale was set to US English. On Tableau Server, if the workbook locale is set to US English, the Tableau Server user language to French, the browser language to German, and the fallback mechanism, the Tableau Server admin locale is set to Chinese, the end result is that the Tableau Server UI is in French because the Tableau Server user language was set to French. And the data format is US English because the workbook locale was set to US English. Now hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, Carla is gonna give you more examples and she's even gonna give us a quiz on this. And now over to Carla for dates and time. I already mentioned how the then the locale can impact your date and time formats. However, we have a, oops, I clicked the wrong button. What happened? 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, how many of you deal with calendars in Europe? Yeah? Are you familiar with the ISO 8601 standard for calendars? That um, is a little bit different than Gregorian calendars. It's apparently very important in Europe to label your, ma your calendars, I mean, with week numbers, but it's calculated differently than in a standard Gregorian calendar. So we added support in Tableau 2018.2 um, when using hyper extracts to support ISO 861, uh, 86, 8601 calendars. So there's four new date parts available. There's ISO year, ISO quarter, ISO week, and ISO weekday. And those are, can be used with the date functions, date part, date trunk, date name, date diff, and date add. And for example, in this one, I just changed year to ISO year with the date part calculation, and then I was able to create new visas. And for example, this is a Gregorian calendar. In the Gregorian calendar, the first week of the year begins on the first day of the year, January 1st, even if that's a Wednesday or whatever day of the week. So you'll see that January, the last day of 2014 was December 31st, 2014. That ended up in week 53 of the Gregorian calendar. However, in the ISO 8601 calendar, when I use ISO year, quarter, week, and weekday, you can see that the very first day of the year of 2015 is, is day one of the 2015 calendar, and that actually fell on December 29, 2014. So it's the first Monday of the first week of the year, no matter what day that falls on. So um, that's pretty cool. We added this new feature just in 2018.2 for hyper extracts. So, Another thing is, how many of you work with locales where the first day of the week is not on a Sunday? Yeah, so do you know how to change the setting? So Tableau defaults to Sunday, no matter what your locale setting is, so you have to manually set this. You can go to the data menu and select your data source, go to date properties, and change the week start to Monday. You can also set fiscal year, but I have more information on that in the uh, appendix of the slide deck. And so the end result would be that if you pick Monday as the first day of the week, your data will show up with Monday as the first day of the week, which hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it does. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about mapping. Um, the thing to know about maps that we've said before is that the locale determines the language that your map data is displayed in. So for example, in this, ex in this slight screenshot, uh, my Tableau desktop user interface was German, but I picked Japanese Japan, and it's in German, and I won't try to pronounce that. And um, so that's why the workbook locale is Japanese, even though my user interface is German, so I'm seeing Japanese map labels. And the fun thing to know, see, anyone can pronounce that. I, <laughs> I don't, don't want to, my last name's German, but I don't speak that one. Um, so the thing to know about the maps is that the world is an ever-changing place and our maps team does a really good job of keeping up on top of these changes um, in their map data. And so if you ever want to know what is the, and they're also adding new support for different locales around the world. So if you ever want to know what's supported for a specific country or region of the world, we have a website, tableau.com slash map data, and you can actually search by the country or region name to find out which geographic roles are supported by language, or I mean, and by locale, sorry. Um, and now back to Carmen. Yeah, cool. So we're gonna briefly introduce a new space in the Tableau community, it is called internationalization. Hopefully you're familiar with the Tableau community, or you've ever, if you've ever read any posts or posted any questions, anything, then this will make sense. So this is a new space, um, which basically is a single space for all discussions, questions, and ideas around language and locale at Tableau. And it's a public space, it's, it's open. All you need to do is have a Tableau community account to be able to view questions and information in it. And what, what's in it for you, really? Why not post somewhere else in the community but go to this space? 
Well, the, the main reason is that it is directly managed by the development team, by the internationalization team, so Carla's team. And if you post anything, they'll be reaching out to you directly about whatever you post. So this is the best place to ask an, exp an expert about internationalization. These guys are the ones who write the code, who test all of the language and locale features at Tableau, so they really know their stuff. So if you have a question, just go there and, and ask a question there. This is also the best place to try out new language features, so already when they're in alpha. And if you have any feedback, this is the right place to submit it. Also, anything that you've seen during this presentation, any features that you would like to see in the future, just post your feedback in there, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can. Yep, so we would really like to see your feedback, and we're really excited about this new space, and it'd be nice if you could, um, yeah, go there and pay us a visit. <laughs> All right, so how many of you are familiar with the $10,000 pyramid game show in the 70s? Does that date me? Yeah. So <laughs> I think this was actually a game show on TV that was localized into a number of markets, and I think it was called the 1,000 pound game show or something like that in the UK, for example. So we're gonna play a little variation on that. Um, and so I do have prizes, and I have some badges and some stickers, and if you like, if you wanna participate, and even if you don't, you're welcome to go grab a badge or sticker at the end of the presentation. <laughs> so, um, question number one, are you ready? All right, default date, time, and number formats in Tableau Desktop are determined by a, UI language, B, workbook locale, C, O, S, language, D, luck of the Irish or Spanish, and E, B, otherwise, C. Any guesses? Yeah. It is E. We first look at the workbook locale, that's the boss, and then otherwise we'll look at the OS locale to determine the format, if workbook locale is automatic. Does that make sense now? Yeah. So remember, whoa! You all said, whoa, right? <laughs> all right, question number two. Are you ready? International date, time, and number of formats in Tableau Server are determined by A, workbook locale, B, Tableau Server user locale, C, browser language, D, Tableau Server admin locale, or E, A, otherwise B, otherwise C, otherwise D. <laughs> what do you think? E. e, you're right, E. And it's because of WUBA. Remember, workbook locale, user locale, browser, language, and then admin locale is the order that we, just, we figure out what format to display your data in Tableau Server. And finally, but if you want more questions, there's some in the appendix. Um, <laughs> on Tableau Server, by default, what locale will your data be formatted in if your Workbook locale is automatic. Your Tableau server user locale is unspecified. Your browser language is Japanese. And your Tableau server admin locale is Portuguese Brazil. Would it be Pig Latin? Bell Island? Any guesses? This is the harder one. D. C. Yeah, it's Japanese, right? Wubba. We had automatic workbook locale. The Tableau server user locale was unspecified, so the next thing we checked in Tableau server was the browser language, and the top language in that list was Japanese, so that's how we display your data in Tableau server. So now I get to thank you for coming by telling you a little sneak peek about what's coming in Tableau regarding international features. Um, one thing that's happening actually happened as of last week. If any of you use online help in languages other than English, you might have noticed that our localized content never got updated after the initial launch. So we are now having regularly scheduled updates to our online help for maintenance releases for all languages that we support. So that's pretty cool. And a new feature coming soon, so watch it in the upcoming betas. Maintain character case for Excel, especially from Japan. We've got a lot of requests to make the data case sensitive kana, or hiragana or katakana distinction, and so we're adding a new feature very soon. 
um, to be able to choose when you import your data or how you want to collate that data. And that will also work in uh, European languages for uppercase, lowercase distinction. Do you want to treat it as the same word or two separate words, for example? Another thing we're going to be doing is improved font measurements um, for cons more consistency across platforms. So if you are creating a workbook in Tableau desktop on Mac and maybe you publish to a Linux server or you're on desktop in Windows and you publish to a, a Linux server or Windows or Tableau online, you might have noticed the font sizes aren't consistent and it can be very troublesome when you publish and it doesn't look the way you expected. So we're working, our formatting team is working very hard to try to make that more consistent for everyone. Um, we noticed this when we switched all of our online Tableau online users to Linux operating system that especially Asian fonts got very large and so we've been trying to fix that. Um, and that should be in a beta soon, so keep your eyes out for it. Another thing is I did mention the ISO 8601 calendar is um, supported in HyperExtracts and in an upcoming release we're adding support for additional data sources. SQL Server, Oracle and MySQL connections will all be coming um, sometime soon and um, I'm not sure about the releases but Keep an eye out for those in the betas soon if, if that's important to you. And another thing is um, my team um, is working on looking at adding more languages to our Tableau user interface, our product UI, and our online help in the next few years. So if you speak a language other than the eight we currently support, come onto the community site and say, hey, I want to see it in this language. Let us know, because we're really looking at the votes on the Tableau community ideas. So next is the resources. If you have want more detail on any of the topics in this presentation, you can go to any of the links on here. There's more content here. I also have this in our Tableau community on a resources page, subpage. And the link to that Tableau community space is uh, down there where it says internationalization. So come join us, because I'll be there. You'll see me answering questions as I can. So. And now, if we have time for Q&A, <laughs> any questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. So like being able to say I want the whole dashboard to be in another language, that is really common, very common request on Tableau and we want to give it to you today. So I would um, keep go to the uh, international site and vote on those ideas. I do think someone's creating a dashboard extension for that any day soon now that's not a Tableau, it's a partner too. So I'll, when I find out when that's released, I will put that on our Tableau um, community page, the internationalization page. But yeah, I, I hear your pain. I want to be able to do that for quite a while now. So um, that's why I want you on the community to let us know what you want to see. Any other question? You had a question? Yeah. I'm curious, do you have a, a global multi-tenant kind of architecture there? And we have a set of standard dashboards and they're, they're um, by tenant, by site, if mm -hmm. we're controlling security. And you said you can't set that at the site level. Oh, and sure. I, and if a user comes in and can set their own individual settings, what happens to a standard English dashboard if they're opening it and they have their settings set to? So you your know, data will still be in whatever language you imported it as, right? So we, like, we don't have this feature she asked about where we can give you a localize, we can localize your data yet. but. Um, like the formatting and stuff, you can either like make a policy okay. where you say, hey, everyone needs to publish in this workbook locale, so it's standard, or you can just let people see it in whatever locale feels most natural. I know when I see German dates it's, or numbers, I want to see them in English format. I don't like mm -hmm. it when someone sets the workbook locale. But um, Carmen had a really good suggestion too, is that you have a policy to put the workbook format in a ca caption as well, so people know 
what they're looking at when they publish things. Um, so I, we don't right now have a way to set policies on sites to say, but we might have, you know, if you have an, a better idea, please let us know so everyone can vote on it because I have seen similar requests where people want site yeah. um, management for a locale language, so. Um, so if you're gonna have two versions, let's say, one in English and one in native language mm -hmm. for whatever region. Right. How do you, how does it handle the conversion, like on currency? I we mean, don't do currency conversion at all. You'd have to create your own calculated field to do that. So okay. that's, what that's hard because, you know, we'd have to get the, the, the current yeah. currency conversion. So I think that might be a really good question to ask other people how they're doing that and then let us know if you want to see something. But I don't think there's, right now there's not a real, Way to, we, we just preserve your currency the way you import it. So we don't convert. You can create another column and then do the conversion yourself with a calculated field. Is that about right? Yeah. Anything else? Do we have time? <laughs> do we have <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, on that same topic, do you have any best practice recommendations for currency conversion? Do you have anything? She's. I would say the same a calculated field. As in, in Tableau, we don't convert. We don't look at the conversion rate at the precise time when, when, you're, when you want to see uh, that conversion. Probably the calculated field is the best bet. Because you can, of course, you can um, customize the field, as in you can change the format to um, the currency OS locale whatever you want to see. If you want to see dollars and English from the United States, but we're not going to calculate that and convert it from euros to dollars at whatever the conversion rate is at the time. So probably the, the calculated field is your best bet. Yeah, we actually have another request right now on the community site that came in like at the top of our request, new ideas, is like give us calculated fields where you can f specify a number format. I think that's a great idea. I'd love you all to, like if you use calculations, go vote on that idea so we can help push that to get done, but that, I don't know, that, that doesn't really help you with currency conversion, but maybe somehow you can use that and format them the way you want them in a specific row of data, so. Um, you had a question? Yeah. So one thing I struggle with is I create dashboards that are viewed by people in the United States, but the data comes in from the UK mm -hmm. and from the US, and the and it will just be the, the dates are all mixed around. Right. And so I figured out the calculate field, but I'm wondering if there's something out of the box to make that a little easier to say. That's why I would suggest having, like telling people don't set a workbook locale because if they're in Germany, for example, they're gonna see it in German, but you're gonna see it in English format, right? In US English format, which is a lot easier for you. But some companies really want to standardize. They're like, no, everyone has to see this in the same locale format. But personally, I like it to just do it automatically so I can see it in the way I understand. But what but happens for me is if I, put, if I just bring it in, mm -hmm. then the dates are all wrong. So instead of January 8th, it's calling it August 1st. Uh, so the, right? so, the, so whole, the whole formatting is different? When it's coming in, so I don't know if there's a way to set it in Tableau Press, The date maybe? itself shouldn't change. Like if it was August 8th, it should be August 8th. It's just, is it, well, August 8th is bad because that's 8-8, eight, eight, right? <laughs> I don't know which is August. But if it was like January 8th, you might see it as one slash eight in one locale or eight slash one in another locale, right? But what I'm saying is so. that the data is coming in from the UK, so I mm -hmm. have like a flat file of that and some data from the US. So those are two different data types coming in. So is oh. there a way to specify it when it's coming in and then I build my workbook from Yeah, there? if you're combining the data, do you mm -hmm. have a better and calculated field? Yeah, okay. if you're, so if your data, if you have two data sources, yeah. it's, and you're, you're like joining them Mm -hmm. Then you set the format on that new field that's created from the joint data, right? So you can just you can choose what format you want it in. Does okay. that make sense? It doesn't yeah. matter if you're if you're joining two tables and one has UK dates and one has uh, US English dates. We're go if, as long as we know it's a date field, we can combine them, mm -hmm. and then you can choose which format you want it to be saved at. It could be either the workbook locale, automatic, or whatever a specific locale. Example. Is that right? Sound about right? Okay. Any other, anything else? Are we out of time? Or? Yeah? Even the 
deployed anything in other languages yet. We're getting ready to go global. Okay. So how would we POC this? And if I just want to take some a set of standard dashboards and just convert them to start seeing what they look like and what works. How? What's the easiest way to do that without messing up someone's machine and their local settings? Or do you want to take one? I think I don't think there is a, an easy way right <laughs> now, unfortunately. Um, you, can, you can vote. I'm pretty sure there's an idea for this in the Tableau community, uh, but we have a white paper on how to set this up. It's not easy, but you can uh, basically what you're looking to do is to have all of your fields in multiple languages on your different dashboards. Then you can have those in a field. So you're going to be using um, say a, a field for all of the names of your different fields in those different languages. Um, the white paper is in the resource page. Yeah, again, it's, it, it isn't easy, but definitely post, go to the, to the internationalization space and post your specific case in there if you like, and probably Carla can, can help you out or we can look at it. Yeah, but again, there's no easy way right now to and do I, that. I think once we build this community site, we're gonna start getting people who are really experts and already been where you've been and it won't be just me answering these kind of questions. They can really give you guidance on you know, how to get global. Because I know how to break Tableau really well. I'm in QA. <laughs> but I'm not the best to tell you how to make a pretty dashboard. So. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to wrap up. And if you have any other questions, or if you have data, and right now you're not seeing what you want to see, we would advise that you make an appointment with Tableau Doctor. You can do that through the app. They're really good, they're experts. And probably Carla and I are gonna be there tomorrow, so if you wanna drop by, we're gonna be there. Also, if you don't, if you don't have time to go to Tableau Doctor or they're booked out, um, you can talk to us at the end of the presentation or you can email us. You're gonna see our email in a moment. So those are our email addresses, feel free to email us with any questions you might have. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming here. Um, thank you so much for your attention, for your participation. And we hope that you got some useful tips and tricks or that you're feeling a bit, tiny bit less confused than at the beginning of the presentation. And we have one more ask for you, and it is that you take a couple of minutes to fill out the survey on the TC18 application. Your feedback is going to determine whether this session is going to be happening again next year or whether moving forward, how to shape the presentation itself. So mm -hmm. that'd be great if you could fill out that uh, survey and give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. And grab, grab a badge or a sticker or both if you like. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs>